I'm Dr. Lacey Gerhard barley and I work with the Paleo Environmental Lab at Kansas State University. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to collect a core sample from a tree uh, for isotope analysis or other gender chronological work. Uh, to start with, you need an increment borer. This is a Hagloff borer, 5.15 uh, millimeters in diameter, which is this measurement. And this one is 18 inches long, which means it can core a tree up to 36 inches in diameter. Now to begin, uh, the core is currently put together for easy storage. So the first thing you need to do is assemble the core to core the tree. You first untwist the end cap and remove the extractor, which you don't need for the beginning steps. So you can set, set that to the side. Then remove the bit from the handle and connect it to the handle by first opening this clamp on the side, inserting the bit through the hole in the center, and then reclamping it. You're now ready to core the tree. Uh, you want to choose a location about chest height on the tree because that's the easiest uh, angle for coring and uh, you want to be in the center of the tree trunk. So for example, if you core here in the center of the tree, you will hit the entire chronology uh, life of the tree. But if you core off center, uh, you'll miss some of those earlier rings. So you want to be as uh, central in the, tree in the tree trunk as possible. If you have a tree that has really shreddy or thick bark, you want to break some of that off first so that you have a flat coring surface. Uh, now also, the beginning of the coring process, it's very important to hold the core steady. Uh, if there's a lot of wobbling, then the end of the core containing the most recent years uh, is likely to break off and you may lose those rings. So I found it's easiest to uh, hold the bit with one hand and then use your other hand to brace the core into the tree uh, and slowly rotate while leaning into the tree. I've chosen a pine today and they're rather easy to core, but for some of the hardwoods you may need an assistant to help you get the core started. Uh, an assistant can come up and put their hands on the bit as well and help push the core into the tree as you're turning it. Uh, and most trees are coreable with two people. Once you get the thread apart into the tree, then you can uh, step back and just continue to turn the core counter or clockwise uh, into the tree. Sometimes the trees will make noise, as you may be able to hear on this one. If you find yourself pulling down on the core at all, uh, you've probably chosen too high of a site. Uh, you want to be able to lean into the tree as you're pouring it, not pull down on the core. You want to get about halfway into the tree in order to collect all of the rings. And if you're unsure how far you are into the tree, you can check using the extractor. The extractor is the same length as the bit, so you can estimate how far you are into the tree uh, in this manner. So you can see I'm about this far in so far. If at any point you notice that the core has lost, uh, lost friction and is just spinning in the tree, that means you've probably cored a tree that is rotted out in the center. This is rather common with oaks. Uh, and you can still use the core and you can still extract it, but it makes it a little more difficult to get the core out and to get the uh, increment borer out of the tree as well. So once you're about halfway through, you want to finish with the handle horizontal Take your extractor and gently insert it into the uh, borer bit so that it forms a little tray for the core to sit on. Now sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the, uh, the extractor all the way flush with the borer. Uh, if you can't get it in all the way, that's okay. You can still get the core out. Uh, if you push too hard, you can bend or actually break the extractor. So you, you need to be forceful, but still a little gentle. Then, to break the core off from the rest of the tree, turn the borer counterclockwise two full rotations. The extractor should again be uh, uh, level with the ground, and you can then pull out gently the core from inside the tree. Now, the bark will often crumble away, that's all right. And you'll sometimes see these black marks along the core, which are from the friction of the borer itself in the tree. Now to store it, we like to use these paper art straws. Uh, they work well for the 5.15 millimeter and smaller diameters, but they're not quite large enough for the larger diameter cores. So remove your core. Insert it into the paper straw.
And then you can tape up the ends uh, and label the core so you know which tree it was. And also label the outer portion uh, and the inner portion so that when you get back to the lab you know uh, which of the rings were the most recent rings and which were older. Now we need to remove the core itself from the tree. Now it's good to not wait too long to take this step uh, because as soon as the wound forms in the tree, the tree will begin sealing around that wound. So if you wait too long, the tree can actually seal around the borer and make it uh, extremely difficult to get the core out. I myself uh, have lost cores this way and I know many other researchers that have as well. So simply twist the core counterclockwise out of the tree. If you cored a tree, as we mentioned previously, that was uh, rotted out in the center, you may have to pull really hard, even bracing yourself against the tree, in order to uh, yank the core out far enough to get traction again in order to twist out of the tree. Once you have removed the core from the tree entirely, you'll want to clean it, uh, particularly if you plan to core another tree immediately after this so that you won't spread disease between multiple trees. Uh, once you've cleaned it and are finished, you can reassemble the core. And take your sample back to the lab for processing.